welcome everyone to another episode of Friday PM. So happy that you could join us. And uh, if you haven't seen Friday PMs before, then if you're a first time visitor, welcome, welcome to uh, our studio. And uh, wherever you're joining us from, I know some of us could be joining us from Africa or the Americas or Asia, Europe, wherever you're joining us from, you are so, so very very welcome to today's episode. I'm so excited because I think really the Lord's going to bless it in a mighty way. So uh, put off anything that can distract you for the next half an hour or so that you can just plug in to what God has for you, you today. There's no accident why you've tuned in. That much I can say. I believe the Lord has a plan if you're watching this. If not for you, but also maybe for someone around you even. So, so stay tuned. So today is a very special day because we're talking about a special topic and you could have seen it. It's called Money Matters and because it, we're talking about money matters but also because money does matter. So a very important topic today and we're very privileged to be joined by Paul Addison. He's on our board of directors here in the UK. He's joining us from Surrey and he's been very faithful to the ministry of Iron Song. He and his, he and his wife Val uh, they've been a faithful supporters of the ministry. And of course, they go a long way back in their friendship with John Watson. Uh, so, Paul, just great to see you. And thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Nice to, nice to be with you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, we so long to see you and, uh, you know, have fun and, and have fellowship. But, uh, yeah, this will have to do for now, unfortunately. Know. It's been a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's been very long, very long. Well, we're going to jump straight into the word, uh, Paul, and for you to uh, just share what's in your heart. And um, may I just say uh, off the bat here that uh, when it comes to money, I always have the deepest respect for you, Paul, because you've, you've always taken money seriously and you've always had a great healthy respect for it. And so I believe the Lord has really prepared you and more than qualified you to speak to us today. Well, I'm going to speak. Oh, sorry. I said, well, let's, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> After, after oh, that build up, <laughs> we do believe in prayer, so you're, you're in good hands. <laughs> All right, Paul. Well, so we're going to just start by reading here our scripture that we're just going to base it from today is from 1 Timothy 6, verse 9 to 11, that says, But those who desire to be rich will fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Yes. All right, well, so first question, Paul. Uh, can I ask you just off the cuff here, is it wrong to want things and like money? No, I don't think so at all. I mean, you can't get by in life without, without having money. Um, but it comes with some risks because, as the scripture says, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Um, but we need money to provide for our families. We need money to pay the gas bill, to have energy in our homes, to pay all the bills. So money is important. And Jesus spoke quite a lot about money, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. But I like, what, I like what money can achieve um, in terms of you know, we're called as Christians to live a life of faith and particularly our financial walk is, uh, is just that. It is, a, it is a, a walk of faith, trusting God to provide for us and money can do great things. You know, I can, I can support ministries that are, are ministering in the, the poorest parts of the world to, yeah. to feed children, to provide kids with an education, to take them off the streets. I can do all of that with money. Uh, I don't have to go myself. In fact, I can't go because I've got responsibilities here, but I can help others do it, just like Vinesong, for that matter. You travel around yes. the world and, you know, you're a blessing. And as I contribute to the ministry of Vinesong, I have that uh, ability to be a blessing around the world. That's a great thing. Yeah. And Paul, I was thinking about it. Sometimes it's to find that balance, I believe, between, you know, it, poverty is not good. A poverty spirit, a poverty av a, a outlook um, to struggle with poverty is bad. But then, you know, if you go too far to the other side too, you, you're going to hot water there. So it's to find that balance, isn't it? Yes, I think so. I believe God, God is a giver. 
uh, he gave and he and he gives all the time and he encourages us to to be givers as well uh, and it's not just money i think we're called to be generous with our time with our words we can encourage people uh, with with our love so there's there's lots of ways that we can be generous uh, to have a generous spirit and a generous outlook on life and it's nice to be around people who are generous you know you you can you can see that can't you yes yes no absolutely and when the when god says in his word test me you know how many times does he say specifically when it came to money he said test me in your giving so we can't outgive god can we no i don't believe so uh god is uh god is faithful to provide although the times certainly i've experienced when it seems like um he hasn't he hasn't heard my prayers because <laughs> i'm waiting a long time i'm saying lord i'm struggling here you know i've got bills to pay um in fact uh, a few years ago i i got behind in my uh tax and it was a real it was a real issue uh and i you know was i was honest with the HMRC I said look I I can pay this I will pay it but I can't pay it right now so I'll pay what I can and I'll pay you something each month um and it took a while but God provided you know in such a great way at, at the perfect time so I managed to clear the back the backlog and get back on you know square with HMRC again wonderful Paul what was the tools that gave you the faith to keep on hanging on cuz sometimes you sow and sometimes god i mean i'm sure you've had the experience instantly within 24 hours or 48 hours we've seen already fruit from that seed but sometimes you get those real long jabardus that yes. take a long time to come up how do you how do you keep the faith on that one well you just take each day as it comes and each day you rely on the faithfulness of god knowing that even though it's not really what you want to be walking through at the time you just have to trust god and know that he loves you and it's going to be okay you know i think that's a that's a great revelation as a christian to know that yes there's um there's problems um but god loves you and he knows what you're going through and just stay stay with the program stay faithful and trust god there's a, there's a wonderful scripture which um uh i love and it's um some 138 verse 7 it says though i walk in the midst of trouble you preserve my life and i think it's it's just so great to know that yeah we have we have trouble you know we walk in difficult times on occasions but god preserves our lives you know he knows what we're going through and uh we'll come through it yeah paul and then also of course we need wisdom in our money spending and of course the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom yes uh and i was just thinking about it you know money is such a such an it, it's so i mean i mean it in the, with a deeper respect but it it's such a volatile substance because money can 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 do great blessings as, as you talked about but the misspending or not having wisdom can create havoc it can create havoc in your marriage when you start disagreeing about it um it can create anxiety stress um substance abuse Uh, all kinds of things and that stress can cause health problems well i yes. mean i'm sure you've you, you've met people like that that are really so deep in stress and their health gets affected so yeah how do we have wisdom not to not to get to that point and and yeah maybe some yeah. some helpful tips there i don't think anybody is is immune to um the pressures that money brings i mean i have uh, i have clients who are very wealthy uh but they still have money pressures and um w- one has to you know walk wisely in life you know the bible says um be very careful how you live not as unwise but as wise and i think this is a something you learn over time uh in 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 a family i would say whoever's good with money matters let them sort of take charge so that could be the wife as opposed to the husband I know many couples where the wife is uh is the smart one when it comes to figures and planning and budgeting and paying the bills and you know she should uh take it on. Um so whatever works for you in the family. 
And practically, it is important to know what your income is and what your outgoings are. And if you don't know that, that's really stage one. You must get a handle on what your income is, what the tax is, what your take-home pay is, and then where that money is going. So make a list of all the bills you pay and keep a record of what you spend. And over a process of, say, three months, you should get a pretty accurate handle on what you need. And when you know that, then you can begin to plan sensibly financially and uh, ideally put some aside as well, try and save some money. If you've got a holiday coming up, uh, you know, I hope one day we'll be able to return to having holidays. Um, <laughs> yes, hopefully. You know, it's good, to, it's good to budget for that, to put some money aside, call it a holiday fund, have a separate account for that. And there's all sorts of tools online where you can, um, you can get help with preparing a budget, uh, actually keeping record of your expenses, recording your income. And that's, uh, that's really important to have a handle on so knowing what your, where the money's going and um, what, what your um, budget is. That, that is important. Oh, very, very useful tip, Paul. I think um, for myself, sometimes if you don't add it up, it's like you don't realize that the five and the ten and the, you know, that the small amounts make an impact on <laughs> yes. you add it up and you go, oh, wow, did I spend that on that? You know, you always yeah. sometimes focus on the big numbers, the, the, uh, the big ins and the big outs, but keeping track of it, yes, so important. Yeah, that's right. Because 100 pounds a week in round figures is 5,000 pounds a year. So if you're spending, you know, if you're spending 50 pounds a week on something, coffee, whatever, that's, um, that's two and a half thousand pounds a year. So if you think in those terms, it's quite helpful. It puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Well, definitely. A yeah. <clears throat> good tip for me to watch my uh, coffee spend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, 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 that one name of a, a coffee shop is called Je Jehovah Java. <laughs> 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 uh, Paul, maybe some practical, uh, you know, spending tips, maybe saving tips. Uh, on a real practical level, maybe just something that you feel has, has, has worked for you to diversify or what have, what have really kind of brought it together for you? Well, I think it's good to have goals. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about if you're going to build a, uh, build a tower, then work out what the cost is before you start because you don't want to be embarrassed by not finishing it. So it's good to have goals. And I think that's a great incentive for saving. So if, if for example, you know that you want to um, go to the States for a holiday next year, then work out what the cost is. Um, and then, well, you can say, well, how much do we ideally need to save each month so that by the time that holiday comes around, we'll have what we need to enjoy the holiday. Mm. So that, uh, with, with a goal in mind, it really it really helps saving. If you're just saving with no particular purpose in mind, then it's, uh, it's, it's not much fun, is it? No. no and it's, it's easy not. to, it's easy to, just to spend, to, to spend now. But it is quite a revelation when you, if you don't know what you're spending on, on various items, then it's quite a revelation when you do find out. So that's really the first, uh, that's the homework for anybody who's in that position this week. Start that. Great. Uh, Paul, we're going to look at two extremes now. Um, one extreme, maybe some advice for someone who is on the one extreme of, let's say, extreme wealth, someone who's doing really well financially. Yes. Um, what are some warning signs if maybe your position can have the potential of taking you away from God? What are the what are the red lights, the, the, the real warning alarm bells that that should go off i think for somebody who's really wealthy the first thing is to make sure they've got vine songs bank details <laughs> so they can make uh, make a donation brilliant brilliant and beyond that and we're gonna we're gonna put it on the bottom of the screen yeah. <laughs> with with my uh, with my vine song board member hat on oh um, of course yes yeah. Well, I think like, like anything else, if you find, if you, if you're honest with yourself and you know, that might be difficult for people, but if you're, 
you know, in, in the, the um, just when it's just you and God, if you can look back and see, well, actually, I sense a distance between us and I haven't, haven't read the word for two weeks. These are signs that you're, you know, you're not in close um, fellowship with God. I mean, he's there, he's still in you. If you're born again, then Christ is in you, which is uh, the wonderful reality of, of living as a Christian. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. But if you're, not, um, if you're not turning to him for guidance or not just having conversations with him, then I think that's an indication that um, you're distracted and money could be the distractor. Because money does give you the, um, uh, it has the ability to take on God-like qualities, doesn't it? Oh, yes. The Bible says you can't serve God and money, one translation says. So money has, um, yeah, it has that ability to, uh, to be preeminent in your life and determine where you go, what you do, because you can afford to or you can't afford it. But it's God that we serve and money should serve us. And ideally, God gives you a steer on, you know, how to spend your money. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, you know, that's whatever works for you. For me, I take the dog out for a walk every morning. I go around a lake near my house. And that's my time normally, very often, which is just us. There's nobody else around because it's early. And that's my time to speak with the Lord, think about the day, think about my work, what I have to do, what's important. And I'll just commit um, uh, what's coming up to God saying, well, I, you know, I really want that meeting to go well. Help me to um, help me to have a good meeting with that client. Um, these days, it's you know a phone call or a Zoom. So just committing the day to him and asking for uh, his his help and uh, his wisdom. And I think if you keep doing that, then it becomes it becomes a natural part of life, and uh, you're always you're always close to the Lord. Yes, Paul, I mean, you're putting into practice what you're saying about the scripture that says, Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. And uh, yes. rightly so. You know, if we put him first, as you said, the rest, the rest just kind of, like you say, it's not always easy, but things end up working out if you put God first. Yes, yes. And I think the... Um... The other key issue is, you know, we live a life of love and loving people in business is good for business, you know, mm. because if you love people, then you're going to have a, uh, you're going to have the right attitude. You're going to serve them and you're going to help them. And that just has a way of making things better. So I would say, you know, walking in love is, is really, really crucial. Letting the love of God that's in us flow out to other people. Yeah, Paul, and as what you're saying is basically to say when it comes to business, it's not like, okay, God, I'm doing my business, so I'm taking care of my business, so you take care of your business and I'll see you later kind of thing. <laughs> you yeah. know, to bring God into, Absolutely, into yeah. what you're busy with, to yes. be at that place. And I, I know you do share the Lord wherever you are. You are that, that person who someone looks and says, well, how do you... How do you stay this peaceful? You know, you've got this going on, but yet I see you've got joy and you still have the joy of the Lord. You still have peace. And that could be a testimony. So, yeah, to take, take God where, you know, in the middle of, of, our, of our money matters. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. I mean, way back uh, when I, as you know, we, we lived in America for a while. When we came back, I was 30. Um, Vel was pregnant with Jordan, our oldest son. And I was unemployed um, and I started a new career. But I thought at the time that I would become a pastor and I was quite keen to go to Bible college uh, in the evening and um, work during the day. But I was reading, and it was a proverb, uh, and the Lord just told me so clearly that that wasn't what he had in mind for me. Mm. That, um, so I had a really clear direction to go into business. And I see that now. I see. I see the the wisdom of that because because I'm in in business. I I get to meet people that I wouldn't otherwise have met. 
And, you know, we're called to be light in the world, aren't we? Absolutely. So I believe I'm in the right place in that respect. Oh, absolutely, Paul. Um, then, Paul, let's talk about someone that's on the complete opposite side of the scale. So now, what's advice for someone who's really, really feel like they're in a deep, dark financial hole and they don't know how to climb out. And if, if you're watching this and that's you today, uh, we really believe that God is going to help you and see you through. And maybe, Paul, for someone who's in that place, what are some tools? Yes, I mean, spiritual tools we can give them as well, but maybe yes. also some financial tools. What are things, initial um, anchors, if you like, just to say to stop this thing from going in the direction that it's going and to make it go the other way? Yes, well, if you're, let's say, heavily in debt with, let's say, credit card debt, there are lots of um, charities now that focus on that and they, give you, they can give you tremendous advice. So um, you might, for example, be able to, with their help, um, contact all the credit card companies and explain that you're in difficulty to freeze the debt and to stop adding any interest to it and then you agree a repayment plan and that can be as little as a pound a month if that's all you can afford so that that charity will go through your um your circumstances they'll ask you questions to get a handle on what your income is what your outgoings are what your indebtedness is and they'll develop a, a plan for you and they do tremendous work. So if that's you, then pick up the phone, contact them without delay and, and get, um, you know, get started. Um, yeah, so that's, that's probably for somebody who's in, in, that, uh, in that situation. Uh, Paul, maybe for someone who don't have access to, that, to those kind of facilities, maybe, maybe someone um, who's in a real kind of a basic situation, um, you want to you wanna stop your unnecessary spending and you want to somehow generate income. Yes, I mean, certainly um, try and prevent wasting money. Um, you know, be, be wise in, in what you spend at the grocery store and, uh, and all the rest of it. Um, but most, m most companies these days, they will, they will help you if you're, if you're honest with them and say, look, I've got a problem paying this, paying this bill. Um, you know, all, all the big companies will, will help you with that. So, you know, that's, that's great in that respect. We live in a, a country that's um, very developed in, in, in that way. Um, and, you know, in terms of trying to generate income, then again, that's, as a Christian, that's uh, where God excels in giving you, opening doors for you and helping you generate the income that you need. Um, in securing the right job and or maybe getting you know promotion with with your existing job god knows what you're going through that's the that's the key thing and you're not alone he's with you yeah and, and paul also uh, addition to this also you mentioned something about cutting out things that that you can do without see where your excess spending is what are things that i can still stay alive <laughs> still have a roof over my head yes you know by God's grace, still have hot water and electricity. I mean, the basic yes. needs, but to cut out anything that's excess, right? Yes, it goes back to what we said earlier about having a budget and knowing where your money is going. And um, so, you know, that's, that's the, the very important place to start is to, to write it all down. Or if you have a computer, create a spreadsheet, uh, list all the people you pay money to, and... Um, you know, you can set up a, a system, but that's the, that's the first place to, because otherwise you don't know where your money is going and you can't make any changes, you can't make any cuts. So that's, that's the first point. And, you know, maybe get help. Speak to somebody who you think can help you, um, somebody you trust, somebody maybe who's more connected to the financial world. You know, we all need help from time to time. We're, we're not designed to live alone um, so yeah, get get help from somebody. Speak to somebody. Pick up the phone. Say, look, I need help. Can you can you help me? If they say no, try somebody else. But you know, go to somebody you trust who is who is honest. I just remember something just came to mind. 
and some time ago in our ministry, uh, we were also saying, Lord, you know, we are also at a financial point where we need some help. And then uh, as, our, as our income was kind of going down, we said, Lord, by faith, now we're going to up our giving during this time by faith. Yeah. We're gonna, even if there is nothing, we decided, well, Lord, you, you promised that you own, you said you own the cattle on a thousand hills. So I'm sure you wouldn't mind selling us a few, <laughs> <laughs> you know, giving us the yeah. money in his time. But um, never to stop giving, right? Yes. No, I, think, I think giving is a key. Um, I mean, the Bible says give uh, not reluctantly. But, um, you know, give what, what you have in your heart to give, um, not under, under compulsion. And that's what, um, I think that's the way to give. You, you give by, uh, by revelation of, of um, where you should be giving, you know, what ministries you want to support. Who out, who out there is doing something that uh, I can't do, who's, who's traveling to parts of the world that I can't, and support those ministries. And you also mentioned, Paul, I think even yesterday when we were talking um, about the heart of giving, that God's more interested in the heart than the amount. And we see the yes. story in the Bible about the widow's might, that it's the heart. I think you mentioned that. And I think that's yes. really a key thing is that's what God's after. I think that's right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Jesus said, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He doesn't put pressure on people. And uh, I think there is, on a, you know, on occasions, there is too much pressure put on people to give. Yes. Uh, but you have to, it's between you and the Lord. And um, if you're, you know, if your children are going hungry, then don't don't be giving to ministries if they're going hungry. Feed your children first. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Paul. That's what God would want, you know. And build yeah. you know, build your, build your life on the truth. Jesus, you know, spoke about uh, you know building a house. You build your life on the rock. And um, then when the storms come, you're going you're gonna to survive. You're going to get through. Yeah, Paul. And, and uh, one, one last thing that I just thought about is uh, if someone, let's say financially, yes, you've, 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 you've given what you can, but let's say you don't have much to give. We also have realized that even if you give time or if you minister to someone or feed a need, Yes. Just to keep on giving because ultimately God will even reward that kind of giving. So if you can't give money, yeah. give something, but just keep giving. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, time is, is a very precious commodity because, you know, if you're giving time, you're giving your life. And um, wow. just spending time with people that um, maybe just need to have somebody listen to them for a while, you know, uh, is, is very valuable. Absolutely. Or giving of your, of your talent if you're, if you're good. You know, mowing the grass and there's an old lady down the road, go and cut her grass or, you know, weed her garden, whatever. Um, obviously, uh, adhering to strict lockdown rules. But um, <laughs> wear, a, wear, wear a mask while you're mowing. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, but you're right. You can, we can give in so many different ways. It's not just, it's not just money. Yeah. But, you know, money is, is a big thing. So, yeah. yeah. Very important. Yeah. Uh, Paul, at this moment, maybe it's a good time to to pray for someone uh, that really needs that bit of encouragement today, that maybe it's someone that needs a miracle, someone who needs a breakthrough, um, and perhaps someone who's just been feeling, my money has taken my time away from God. Um, I feel like I've grown a little, a little not so hot and not so on fire for you, and I, and, and I need wisdom in my, in my money spending. I need to get that fear of the Lord back where sometimes money has become so easy that I've lost that real fear and respect for it. Um, so why don't you lead us in that prayer today? Someone might really be in a tricky place, in a real dark place. And I'm sure you've had that experience, Paul. Money has a way, it just darkens your world because as we said before, it can impact every, every area of your life and impact you mentally, psychologically, your marriages, your relationships, your friendships, your social life. It, 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 it's just a terrible thing. When it's great, it's great. But when it goes bad, it, it, has, it has so many negative effects. So let's just agree together. Why don't you lead us in that prayer? Let's just pray for someone out there today that really need that word today. Okay. Well, Lord, uh, we're conscious today that there could be many people watching who are struggling financially. Maybe they're in debt. Um, maybe they just need to get a handle on 
where their money's going. So I pray you'll help them do that. And bring people alongside them, Lord, to help, to give them uh, wisdom in, in that work. For those that are really struggling with debt, I pray you'll connect them to the right um, charities, perhaps, who can, who can help and lead them out of that. We know, Lord, you're faithful. And we know that you understand what we're going through. Nothing is hidden from you. And um, for those, Lord, who find money a distraction and who, if they're honest, would say that they've been led away through the deceitfulness of wealth and, and riches, we pray for them tonight too, Lord, that you um, just bring them back to that intimacy with you that blessing of intimacy, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. So we thank you that you have a plan for our lives, and that's a wonderful thing to know, Lord. And maybe some out there listening tonight just aren't sure about that. Well, I pray that you'll make it just very clear and real to them as they purpose to just reach out to you, spend time in your word, and to be open to you. So we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. And as your word says, though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve our lives. And that's such a wonderful promise to, to hold on to. So thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We want to tell you how much we love you and appreciate all that you do for us. And thank you for your wonderful provision. You are an amazing giver. And you, you've caused us to be givers as well. So help us to, to be those givers to support ministries that are doing a great work, but to be givers also of our time and our talents, to be good listeners, and just to be light in the world as you called us to. And we ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Paul, thank you for that prayer, bless you. Thank you for sharing so well from your heart and giving us some good advice today. Um, I'm sure someone out there feels lifted, feels lighter, and feel that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train, it's the light of Jesus, um, and that God's going to pull someone right out of that debt, out of that situation. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. Oh, you're welcome. I've enjoyed it. Praise the Lord. Great. Well, see you again hopefully soon on yeah, another... A week on Friday p.m. Paul, thank you for your continued support again for the ministry um, as a friend, as someone to, to counsel with, to, to talk with, and uh, someone to play, to play some golf with as well. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're doing it virtual now because we, we can't get out there, but yeah. uh, hopefully soon. Yeah. Uh, but Paul, thanks again so much. Okay, you're very welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Bless you. So goodbye, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this episode. See you hopefully next week for another exciting episode of Friday 8 p.m. God bless you and goodbye.